Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. Welcome back to Hat Cam Bass's Beginner's Guide to Bass Fishing. This is part nine. In this episode, we're gonna talk about some basic retrieval techniques and other tips that allow us to attract a bass to our bait and get that all important bite. Before we get to the retrieve itself, we're going to begin with how to properly hold our bait caster and also talk about some other important parts of the retrieve, like how to get our bait to the required depth. Proper hand positioning on a bait caster is critical during the retrieve. Here are some examples of how not to hold a bait caster. These kinds of grips will result in a lack of rod control, which is required to work certain baits. Also, and perhaps more importantly, you'll lose power on your hook sets, which we'll talk more about in part 10. The proper way is to wrap your offhand around the reel by placing the trigger of the casting rod between your middle and index fingers. Now there's a little bit of leeway here depending on what's most comfortable for you. For example, some people like to place the trigger between their ring finger and pinky. Either way, we want the reel to be seated firmly in this part of the palm, with your thumb draped over the top of the reel. Because this hand positioning allows you to transition easily from a soft grip to a firm grip, you'll have full control and power of your bait caster. Before we can begin our retrieve, we need to decide if we want our bait near the surface, along the bottom, or somewhere in between. Some baits float, some dive, some fall, and some suspend. For baits that don't float, we need to take into account how fast they will descend, keeping in mind that different baits will fall at different rates. If you want to retrieve a bait near the surface, you should start reeling almost as soon as the bait hits the water. If you want the bait to fall to a lower depth, get in the habit of doing this. Feeding line like this allows the bait to fall in a more vertical fashion. If you don't do this, you might end up missing your intended target as the bait pendulums back towards you. So how will you know when your bait has hit the bottom? Usually by looking at your line. When it goes slack, it's a good indication that the bait has reached the bottom. Now let's talk about the retrieve itself or the presentation of the bait using those 10 essential baits that we talked about in part five of this guide. The spinner bait is a pretty straightforward bait, usually fished with a steady, moderately paced retrieve at all depths. A fast retrieve towards the surface called burning can be used, as well as a technique called slow rolling, a slow retrieve usually used towards the bottom. Try occasional twitches of the rod tip as well. The swim jig and chatterbait are typically fished at faster speeds at shallower depths. The skirt and trailer will do most of the work, so a steady retrieve will do the trick. But try throwing in the occasional twitch of the rod tip for extra action. Another fast moving bait is the lipless crankbait. These can be fished at all depths and are especially effective at higher speeds. The vibrations and tight wobbling motion are primarily what triggers bites, so a steady retrieve is quite effective, but also consider a quick stop and go retrieve for variety. The closely related crankbait floats, but will dive to certain depths as you crank the reel. Crank the reel to get the bait to its proper depth. Once there, crankbaits are usually fished with a steady retrieve or with occasional pauses. Banging the bait into cover is a great way to trigger bites. Soft plastic worms are typically fished along the bottom. Baits like this ribbon tail worm can be fished a variety of ways. Common techniques include dragging it or hopping it with small upward rod tip movements. A wacky rig Cinco can be fished similarly, although bass are usually prone to hit this bait as it falls. Soft plastics are often fished slower than other baits but as always, varying the speed of your retrieve can be effective. The buzzbait is our first topwater bait. 
It resembles a spinnerbait except its blade helps propel it along the surface of the water. Start cranking the reel as soon as this bait hits the water and a steady retrieve will get the blade spinning and clapping against the water to attract fish. Experiment with different speeds. A topwater plug or popper bait like the Rebel Popper floats and is fished with quick successive twitches of the rod followed by pauses. The splashing mimics a distressed bait fish. Experiment with various cadences and be ready because bass often like to hit this bait on the pause. One of the most important things to understand about retrieving baits is knowing that even the most subtle aspects of the way a bait moves or doesn't move can mean the difference between catching and not catching fish. So never hesitate to experiment with different speeds and presentations to get better results. Assuming everything has gone to plan and we finally tricked that bass into taking our bait, it's important to understand what a bite may feel and look like. So let's talk about detecting bites. How a bite looks or feels depends mostly on the bait and presentation being used. Bass generally have to move aggressively to take a fast moving bait like a spinner bait or lipless crankbait. Those bites are much easier to detect. If you don't feel the thump of a bass striking one of these lures, you'll definitely notice your line going extra tight and the rod tip bending which is the most common occurrence. For a slower moving bait like most soft plastics, bites can be a little trickier to detect. You might feel a big thump for these baits as well, but more commonly you'll feel a light tick on the line. Sometimes you won't feel the bite at all and this is when you need to rely on your visual senses. Watching the line move is a huge tip off. Left or right movement can be easy to see but also watch for the line moving towards you and away from you. This usually means the bass has picked up the bait and is moving. The topwater bite is the easiest to detect of course because you'll usually see and hear the bass coming out of the water to strike. But be aware of the subtle topwater bite too which might appear like a small swirl in the water. Being able to accurately detect when a bass has taken the bait really only comes with experience, but tackle can also assist you. For example, braid and fluorocarbon lines are more sensitive than monofilament and therefore can make it easier to feel when a fish has taken the bait. Also, higher quality rods tend to be more sensitive as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for part nine. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed it, if it was helpful and you want to support Hat Cam Bass, hit the like button and most importantly, share this with people that you know that might be interested in bass fishing. That's the entire point of the series. We're going to move on to part 10, though. It's the final part. We're going to talk about how to successfully land that fish once it's been hooked. As you bring the rod forward, release your thumb from the spool between the 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock position to let the lure fly. Wrap your dominant hand around the rod handle and the reel so that your thumb is resting over both the spool release button and the spool itself.